right now to college football after falling behind 17 to 3. It felt like the youths were going to complete a rally in Eugene Saturday night. They tied the game at 17, but missed one opportunity after another in the fourth quarter to complete the comeback and win that game. The loss dropped the Utes in the polls, number 14 now in the AP Top 25. It also left their Pac-12 championship hopes on life support. But I have good news. Those hopes aren't dead yet. This is what has to happen for the Utes to make the Pac-12 title game against USC. First, Oregon must lose to Oregon State in Corvallis. UCLA must beat Cal, and Washington must win the Apple Cup against Washington State for all the tiebreakers to go the Utes' way. But with no control of that situation, the Utes can only focus on a strong finish to the season, starting with Colorado in Boulder on Saturday. Uh, it's a tough day. I mean, the ultimate goal is just to win the game. Uh, we weren't able to do that, so uh, it sucks. It hurts a lot. Um, the only thing we can do now is respond, though. Uh, we got Colorado next week, so just looking forward to that. We'll watch this film and then move on to that. 104. There were many reasons the Utes fell against uh, Oregon, but uh, it's hard to ignore the struggles of Cam Rising. Just 21 of 38 for 170 yards. No touchdowns, and those three interceptions were huge. Uh, that was a career high for Cam, and he missed on an easy throw here on the crucial fourth down play that would have extended a fourth quarter drive. The Utes had three drives of 10 players or more where they failed to come away with any points in what turned out to be a, just a three-point loss. He wasn't at his best tonight, but neither were some other guys as well. And I'm sure some coaches could have been better. I mean, everybody could have been better. So, But uh, Cam didn't seem to uh, find much of a rhythm uh, tonight like he usually does. He usually uh, he's able to get into a rhythm, but uh, wasn't able to uh, get that tonight. All right, breaking down this loss is a tough job, but Stevenson Sylvester's <laughs> got to do it. Sly, I mean, we just talked about Cam rising. Look. The quarterback's going to get the praise or the blame. Mm -hmm. That's just how mm -hmm. this works. Comes with the job. Right now, Cam's getting the blame, and he would be the first to say he wasn't great last night. But there's more to it than that, right? Yeah, no question. I mean, he didn't play well in that game. But if you look at it, there were a lot of spots in that football game where we missed on a lot of parts. As Coach Whittingham said, he's not the only guy to blame. Yeah. You know, uh, there were some things. But uh, for Cam Rising, of course, the interceptions were blatant. You know, the, the tip passes, that was just unfortunate. You know, you got to see the D linemen there. But, uh, you know, on, on, on other things, you know, fourth down, we were one of four on fourth down. We got to convert. If we're going for it on fourth down, you want to make it. But I want to point out this fourth down late in the second quarter here you know it, we're goal to go here right you know we can kick a field goal or we can go for the touchdown we decided to go for four but a lot of people were like cam rising should have took the check down but you got to understand exactly football is an anticipation sport right and cam is seeing man-to-man -man coverage on his number one receiver if devon vele gets a great release off the line of scrimmage it's most likely going to be a touchdown because it's man-to-man, -man, and that's what he sees. So Devon Vele releases here. It's a great release, right? But what we don't anticipate is contact from somebody who's not supposed to be in the picture. There is contact right here, and this is while the ball is in the air. I don't know in what world, but that's pass interference. Right. And then hit the guy who's covering him also, pass interference. The ball goes out of the back of the end zone, but Devon Bailey is 6'5 and has amazing leaping ability, but he was unable to make a play on that. That should have been called pass interference. But you got to understand, Cam Rising, this is what I saw. Am I going to take the check down or am I going to go for the touchdown, mm -hmm. right? And so he saw the touchdown there, which should have been, but didn't happen. Yeah, as difficult as it was for Cam and the offense, the defense really kept them in the game yeah. throughout the whole the whole time. Yeah, no question. The, the defense played awesome in the second half. You know, in the first half, they were letting Oregon get kind of what they wanted, but they buckled down at halftime. They said they really didn't make any adjustments. It was more of an attitude adjustment that they made. It was just like, look, lock down on our technique and make things happen. But it was all sparked by Karene Reed. He did an amazing job in that second half of leading this defense and starting to make plays. And then, of course, our, I believe, all-American yeah, corner, no Clark Phillips, um, is just electric, right? This guy makes plays at the drop of a hat exactly when you need it. And he came up big, and the defense did everything that they could to keep us in that football game. So hopefully, you know, that scenario pans out, and we still we'll get see. to go to Vegas. We'll see how it plays out either way. We'll hope the Utes uh, finish strong here to end the season.